The heart of a man is like the root of a tree. Your heart determines the fruit you bear. Holy Spirit, we ask that you take charge of this message this morning. Bless us through your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to turn our Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. From verse 26 to 35. We're going to read. Proverbs chapter 23. From verse 26 to 35. Thank you Lord. My son. Give me thy heart and let thy eyes delight in my ways. Verse 27. For a for a harlot is a deep ditch, and for a foreign woman is a narrow pit. Give me King James. Give me King James. Do we have King James there? Good. I just want us to take the first verse, 26. That's where I really want to dwell on. Let's read together. My son, give me what? Your heart. And let your eyes observe what? Let's read it loud. One to go. Let's take it louder. Observe my ways. Now, the first key... So a life of the overflow or abundance in God is giving God your heart. Giving God what? Giving God what? Your heart. Giving God your heart. The truth still remains that when you give God your heart, there is nothing you can give to him. When you give God your heart, there is nothing in this life you can give to him. Psalm 119 verse 10, quickly. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Psalm 119 verse 10. Psalm 119 verse 10. Let's read together. With my whole heart, I have sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Let's read it together. One to go. With my whole heart, I have sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Somebody said your heart. Say it louder. He said, with my whole heart, I have sought thee. Let me not wander away from thy commandment. Your heart is what God seeks for every time. Not your face. You can be good in face, but not be good in heart. That is, if you are going to have abundant life here, your heart must be connected to God. If you are going to have a fulfilled life here, your heart must be connected, must be redirected to God. The first scripture we read is said, my son, give me your heart. Now that means that you can be a child of God and your heart is not yet given to God. Does that make sense to somebody here? He called him his son, but his heart was not yet given. He called him his son, but his fullness was not yet released. He said, my, heart, my son, give me your heart. Somebody's heart will be redirected to God here. Amen. If you believe it, you say louder, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Quickly. Jeremiah 29, 13. I want us to read this place together as a family. Want to go? And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with what? All your heart. Did he say some of your heart? With what? I didn't hear that. With what? I didn't speak it, say it louder. With what? Thank you. He said and ye shall seek me and what? And find me. When ye shall search for me with what? 
That is finding God has to be involved with the whole of your heart. Not some. Not some. Lord, why are you not answering me? You are searching for him partially. Lord, why are things not working? Your heart is not fully given to him. Your heart. And what are the proofs that your heart is given to God? What are the proofs? What are the proofs? Two major proofs. One, you care less of yourself and care less, uh, care much about him. When you begin to care less of yourself and care more about him, is a proof that your heart is given to him. Matthew 6 33 said, But now seek ye first the kingdom of God and his worth, righteousness, and every other thing shall be added. Not some. But for these things to be added, you must first seek the kingdom. The reason why a lot of people are frustrated, the reason why a lot of people are buffeted, is that they consider themselves first than God. My son, give me your heart. My son, give me the totality of your being. And I will make a, a blessing out of you. But this one, you are, you are so conscious of yourself than God. Now, when you are so conscious of yourself than God, that's when you, you begin to bother yourself about what people say about you. Bother yourself about what people think about you. My son, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. That is the key to a world of all and abundance overflow, protection, preservation is a heart that daily pounds after God. That was the secret of the man called David. David said, my heart daily pounds after you. That I may know you, Paul. Is Angla Kido Sagabalanitz is here. Listen, that was also the secret of Paul. And Paul prayed the prayer and he said, Oh God, that I may know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your sovereign. By that time, that Paul was saying that he has written scriptures, scriptures about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the same Paul that wrote those things still said, Oh God, that I may know you. That I may know you. He still considered himself that he has not know much about this God. And by the reason of his consideration, he prayed that, Oh God, that I may know you and the fellowship of your sovereign. That is, once your heart is after God, there are things you don't struggle for. How do you know a young woman or a young man that has given his heart to God? Anything that has to do with God moves such one. Anything that has to do with God moves such one. I make a decree as Jehovah God live it, your heart will pant after God. If you believe it, you say louder, amen, here. Amen. I said, as a child of God, hear this. I said it again. You can be a Christian and your heart is not for God. Your heart is for self. To amass wealth. Everything you are doing is just for yourself. By that, your motive become wrong. By that, your motives become wrong. See, we see, when you give God your heart, it shapes your motive. It shapes what? It shapes your motive. It shapes your action. Everything you do is galvanized and filtrated by, the, by your heart for God. That was why, if you check the reason why David confronted Goliath, he wasn't confronting Goliath for self aggravation He was confronting Goliath to orchestrate glory to God. Yes. That is the key to a world of abundance is to have a heart that daily, consistently pounds after God.
is for God. In the morning, God. In the afternoon, God. In the night, God. Somebody shout God. Say it louder than that. Shout it like a Christian here. God. Lift up your hands to heaven. Your two hands in your seated position. Maro de Asosai. Bakito Zakilo Baranda Koskila Badonai. Gio Shaga. Babi Kirundi Kahazubi Anene. Mato Zangle Kito Zabari. A Protezi Abarandi Katuzana Bai. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. After now, you will have a heart for God. As after now, God will testify of you. The way he had the testimony about Joel, that you are a man after his heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. He got to a time in the God's operation and his diary and his files. God spoke from heaven to Satan. He said, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? A man that is upright. A man that fears me. Job was a man after God's heart. David was a man after God's heart. See, there is no man in scriptures that God lifted that he didn't lift on the basis of their heart. On the basis of what? See, men can see your face, but God sees your heart. See, in the diary of God, God does not look at your face, he looks at your heart. In the operations of God, God recognizes people based on their heart. Based on what? I didn't hear that. Based on what? Your the heart. Your face can deceive people, but your heart can't deceive God. The quality of your work with God is not by your smiling face, it's by your heart. It's by what? Talk to me. By what? See, can I shock you? Your act is more powerful than your action. That is why God weighs action based on the motive. And when we hear the word motive, he's talking about the state of the mind. The state of what? Somebody can slap someone and people say that person is bad. But they slap that person because he wanted to save that person. You see a child going close to fire, you slap the child. To everybody, why will you slap the child? But you have seen something that they didn't say. And God judges you based on the reason. See, the reason talks about the heart. The reason talks about the heart. Lord, I just love you. Money or no money. See, when you come to that realm, you will have no problem with money. If in this life, money can determine your action, you have failed before you started. You should come to a point, money in your pocket and no money in your pocket, you are excited. See, when you come to that realm, you have conquered money. When you come to that realm, you have conquered the world. The heart of a man is like the roots of a tree. Your heart determines the fruit you bear. Am I talking to somebody here? Your heart determines the fruit you will worth. You bear. If you have a corrupt heart, you will bear corrupt fruit. Your heart is your what? God didn't say guide your head. Though. He said guide your heart. With all what? Diligent. It didn't just end there. You see, you have to guide it with diligence. The word diligence means you have to work on it. You guide it. You are skillful about it. You are, you are consistent about it. Now, what that means is that what you allow into your heart matters. Am I talking to somebody here? How far you will go in life is determined by the state of your heart, sir. Is it done by the state of what? Your heart. You will go far. That amen is under construction somewhere there. The proof that you are giving God your heart is that you consider him before yourself. Anything that God approves, that's what you do. Anything. Somebody say your heart. Guide it. Two, how do you know you have given God your heart? You want to listen to him every time. You just want to talk to him. You, that one hour you ought to sit somewhere and say, I'm coming more. You are worshipping God. You are worshipping God. You are worshipping God. When you come out, you become very creative. When you come out, you become very productive. Give him your heart. When you give him your heart, you will have time for him. When you give him your heart, you will give to him. Do you see that young lady that has been calling Fred? It is 
Fred will never struggle to give him anything. The master key to receive things from God is to give him your heart. He said, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe. The heart is to be given, the eyes is to observe. The heart is to be given, the eyes is to what? Observe. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. Young girl, when you give God your heart, you won't struggle to come to church. Let me tell you something about love and lust. There's a slim line that differentiates them. One lasts forever. One lasts for a moment. Love lasts forever. Lust lasts for a moment. Somebody you genuinely love, you can't fade. Somebody you are lusting after is just a why. Have you seen love? Genuine love. You will see somebody. See, genuine love. There's still genuine love. Somebody that loves you genuinely can go any length with you. It doesn't care what people say is about you. But lost is moved by what people say. Once people say, you know, fine, no good, you know, good, this thing, their love will be going down. Their loss will be going down. But love, the more they condemn you, the more he loves you. Am I talking to somebody here? That is, give him your heart. Give him your heart. Can I shock you? Is in crisis you test the voltage of love. Crisis is the acidic test of what? Love. Am I blessing somebody here? Crisis is the acidic test for what? That's why the Bible says love never fail it. If you love God, no matter what the church is going through, you stand with God. You are there. Because your heart is there. Your heart is there. Your heart is there. I see someone... As you give God your heart today, you will be the one that we talk about. Amen. I thought you say better amen. amen. I thought you say vibrating amen. Yes. 